And it, it all started with, you know, I caught this infomercial on TV one night for P90X. Like, has anybody seen that thing on TV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, but what's funny is it's kind of the history of where we all came from. It started with this thing on TV. You found it, I found it. We were customers, you know, dropped into the customer lead program. Here we are. And we said yes to life repeatedly. We went to everything. Mm -hmm. Anything we could qualify for, we qualified for it. If they had a thing where you could go to a leadership event, like, what does it take to go there? Yeah. And we did it. And we just made sure it happened. I remember my first game plan event, I drove five hours to Chicago. I actually called Josh Spencer up and said, Josh, we've never been to an event. We didn't know crap about coaching. At that time, there was nothing else. Uh, we didn't know crap about objection handling. <laughs> right? We didn't have those kind of people skills. We were just very enthusiastic about products, but found ourselves a lot of times running into some brick walls in those conversations with people because when you don't have skill sets, it's easy to provoke objections and, and get excuses from people just because of how you handle situations. So Mike and I have spent a lot of time really just studying people, studying communication, practicing things, making mistakes with people and going, what, what did I screw up here, right? How many of you have made mistakes with people and you know you did and you're like kicking yourself in the tail because you know you screwed up that potential life? And the thing is when you screw up, uh, that, it's okay, that, that's part of your education, that's part of your learning. What's not okay is to not learn from that and, and, and move forward with it. So um, why don't we get on to the next slide, because Mike's going to spend some time with you talking about what we're going to talk about today, which is mastering objections. Yeah, you know, the thing is, uh, for me, I learned through failure. Uh, if you've ever read John C. Maxwell's book, Failing Forward, I'm, I'm like, wow, there, were, there was a lot of life lived and a lot of life lessons in that book. And I was willing to fail because, I one, I believed in what we were doing. I believed in myself. I knew that what we had would change lives because it changed my life. And then I was okay with people not getting it. I thought, okay, if, you know, if I get a no, and I get a no, and I get a no, I'm just getting closer to my yes. And like Tommy said, I would uh, spend a lot of time working hard on understanding where did I maybe just screw up in that conversation. Did I talk too much? Which for me was an issue, actually. Uh, How many people have that issue? You can't shut your friggin' mouth. You right? just want to tell Pete on the extra <laughs> reason. I lost 44 pounds and went to the three and sleep great, blah, 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 and we puke up. And like Tracy Morrow called it today, the fact acts. Just picture that they're a tree and you're cutting that thing down. <coughs> fact after fact after fact. And we'll get into that in this presentation about facts, how facts tell the stories sell. But, you know, but you're going to walk away with some really key things today. And, and our, it's our goal to have you just feel so much more confident when you leave here today, armed with the knowledge of how to go have a better conversation, how to get more distance out of it, that you realize it's not some anecdotal statement we're going to give you, some magic words that you can take back and go, oh, I can say this, and then it fixes them, and they say yes, and they buy my challenge pack, and they take my challenge, and they get ripped, and then they're on stage next year. It doesn't happen that way. So we're going to go through and lay the groundwork and, and really help you get through to this. Yeah. So, so, oh, i got to go back. Hold on. Same buttons. Sorry about that. How do I go back? Right back. So, th listen, this is, we have to have an agreement. You guys showed up. And I want you to understand something, man. There's a lot of people out there getting drunk by the pool right now, right? Or, or, or they went back to their room to socialize a little bit before they go to the T25 workout, which they should be going to. But you guys are the ones that are, are dead serious about doing this and getting better, right? And so, so you guys, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, there's 7,000 people at this, and, and right now there's only about 2,500 to, to 4,000 of those people actually sitting in a chair learning something and getting better, right? And you're some of those people. So that deserves respect. And so we don't want to waste your time. We want to bring you something that's going to be worth your time, right? More than what that beer is worth for those people that are sitting out by that dang pool, right? They should be having a beer at 10 o'clock tonight, not, not right now. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk to you about how to identify common objections. There's some common objections you get, right? And we, we all know time, money, spouse, you know, uh, that crap's too hard. I can't do it. Uh, all that stuff. Um, we're going to give you some skills and methods to prevent and avoid objection. And so there's a difference between objection prevention and avoidance and objection handling. Do you guys understand that? Yes. Many times you provoke objections, and Mike has some great stuff. I provoke objections all the time with my wife, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How many people do that, right? Yeah. Um, but these skill sets work at home, too. They do. They really do. Uh, but Mike has some great stuff. And so how it's going to set up is this. Mike's going to talk to you. He's got some really great stuff. He's going to kind of give you the philosophy and the thinking behind it. And then I'm going to actually take and, and role play for you. 
uh, exactly how I do the five-step process and how that works verbally with people, whether it's on the phone or whether it's on Facebook or whether it's face-to-face, -face, and, and show you exactly what we do in the field that uh, helps us prevent and avoid objections. How many people would like to understand that a little bit more? So don't Woo! you say for the wall all the time. And this is all stuff that you can learn. It's all stuff that you can learn. And, and then, and then we're going to give you some specific objection handling techniques yes. that you can go through. So, so Mike's going to take it over right now and, and talk to you about what your job is. Yeah. So the key thing when we talk about being humble and being coachable or teachable uh, is that's that's a pretty big statement to say that I'm coachable. Because when you say that you're coachable, that means you're okay with feedback. That means you're okay with your mentor, your coach, your success partner, whoever that is for you, whoever that is, guiding you or giving you that, that criticism that you take it that way. But if you if you don't take this criticism, you go over here and you go, okay, give me some feedback. Tell me what I'm doing. Tell me what I'm doing right. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Maybe tell me some places I can get better. That's a way for you to really start working on yourself. Because just like these workouts, this is the workout for our business right here, right? So yeah. if you imagine if you go to P90X four times in the next year, you're going to get ripped. But on guess what? On day one of the second year, day 366 from now, you're still doing chest, back, and abs. Yeah. Yet, you're now you're getting 20 pull-ups a set. Now you're just banging on abric reps like crazy, and you're working out with Tony in the front row and proud of it, right? Well, what if you only do P90X for 90 days through the next full year? You just don't get that great of results. And that's what happens a lot of time in the business. And so when I say be, hope, be humble and be coachable, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about people that are really going to go all in. I kind of have this thing about I'm all in. If you see that hashtag, I've, I've, we've been pumping it for a long time. Yeah. I, I, got a, I want to tell you a story about Mike. When he talks about being humble and coachable, okay, the week that he hit 15 star diamond, in fact, the day that he officially turned 15 star diamond, Thursday morning. Mike and I spent two hours on the phone, and he was asking me questions about how to do this, right? How, I mean, that's being, how many of you, when you hit 15 star diamond, you're not going to spend two hours on the phone trying to learn more that day, right? You're going to be cashing in that $20,000 bonus check. That's what you're going to be doing. But Mike, I mean, that's who Mike is. Mike is always wanting to learn. Uh, when you see successful people like us, we're always wanting to learn, just like you guys do with fitness. So anyway, your job is to identify what we bring today. There's a lot of what we say today that's going to go over your head. Some of it's going to go under your feet, and some of you, some of it's going to come like a friggin' bullet right in your chest, right? Whatever's hitting you in the chest today over the next 50 minutes, that's what you want to catch. Don't catch the stuff that's uncatchable. Whatever two or three or four things are speaking to you today. That's what you need to take, that's what you need to apply, that's what you need to learn, and, and go do out in the field. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right, so, here we go, Mike. You want the clicker? Because this is your section. Sure. So, <laughs> so, here's the most common objections on earth, right? And for me, I just, in my head, they, they mostly boil down to time and money. And last time I checked, I don't know anybody that gets less than 24 hours in a day. Do you? No. Anybody else? Paul? Lori, anybody? 24 hours a day, right? We get, we're all on the same page. We've got 24 hours in a day. So when people give me the time excuse, I just laugh in my head to myself. I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you have to look at this as like kind of a fun thing because you're going to get it a lot. So you don't look at it and be pissed and go, oh, dang it, I got it again. Uh, and a lot of people will do is they'll get the uh, money objection and they'll hear somebody say, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna, that challenge pack sounds good. I like this challenge idea. I've got, I've got goals and you seem like a nice guy. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that after uh, I get paid in a couple weeks. It's always time and money. And last time I checked, someday isn't on the calendar. It, it's right now. Okay, so you ask leading questions, you, and we're going to get at all these different things. But these are the common things that we all run into. I mean, is there anybody that's ever had a spouse that wasn't supportive of what you're doing with this business or with the fitness that didn't like healthy food, right? It's a common thing that happens. And so we're not here to go ram it down their throat. We're just here to help enlighten you so that they will support you in a much better way. The pyramid thing, I literally never get that anymore because I just, I present it with such strength and it's my confidence that comes across. And funny enough that Tom and I are standing here together sharing this because uh, as, as long as you and I have been success partners, and we talk about learning from each other, and we were on the phone Thursday morning. As soon as that thing clicked over, the <laughs> rain, I was like, ooh, yeah. what can I do? And people were calling, congratulating, and I'm like, I, I, I got stuff that's wrong. i got to fix I got people to help. And, and all the diamonds, all the stuff represents 
It's not about me. It's not about Tommy. It, those are about you. Those are about lives that we've helped empower. We've enlightened, we've empowered, and then it's up to you to go do the thing. And so, here's the big thing with the order of things. This is the thing I created. It's called the seven R's. When you want to make a recommendation to somebody, imagine, picture this for a second. You're at your kid's little league game, and I sit down next to you, and I start telling you, hey, you need to do P90X. You ever seen that on TV? I did it. I kicked ass. I'm awesome. It's great. You should do it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Shakeology is cool. It's a meal replacement. It's chocolate. It tastes good. It's yummy. It's boo. Regular. Whatever, right? So people go and they, and they tell these stories, stories, stories. And they don't really tell stories. What they're telling is a bunch of facts about themselves and about this workout. Have a little rapport first. Have a little get to know you. I don't think that works when you're dating and you're single and you just went up to the girl at the bar like, oh, hey, hey, I'm awesome. You gotta check me out. It's great. Come on, let's go. And it just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? So you have some It's for me. Well, okay. <laughs> Even as a fat guy, I had a hot personality. So. Confidence. So. <laughs> so you have some rapport before you have a relationship. Okay, so even if I catch up with somebody I went to high school with and I haven't seen him in a long time, we need to do some catching up. Just because I played high, uh, soccer or golf or something with somebody in high school doesn't mean that's what they're doing today. They might be a farmer. They might be a doctor. I don't know what they're doing. And it's up to us to have a good conversation to find out. So why would you ever recommend anything before you've done that? But yet so many people want to go out there and tell these P90X stories and insanity and now it's going to be T25. I mean, look how good you look, man. T25 is like... Tell you what, man. It's legit. Ain't it? It's legit. Seriously. We got a bunch of T25ers over here. T25ers over here. Like people showing me abs and people like looking at yeah. Pino and stuff. Like, yeah, but you know, and, and really what you're talking about, though, is the whole, you know, like, what I, I've learned from Danny is relationship first, business follows in every conversation. Absolutely. Every conversation. Relationship first, business follows. I, I do that with every prospect. I do that with my wife. Right? I want to talk to her about life first before saying, honey, did you get the laundry done? Right? <laughs> Relationship first, business follows. How's your name? Right? You said, hey. Yeah, anyway, see, I'm, I'm, it's really I'll just true. shut up. I'm thinking I'm going with the women in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's not here today, huh? So, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so we used to hear have this thing, and a lot of people have probably heard the three R's: retail, recruit, retain. That's just sales. That's not exciting. That's like go to a car lot and go to a thing. And no disrespect, but you know, I don't need to make come say anecdotal things and act like they're my friend. Just come, hey, man, how's it going? We all get that same innocuous greeting every day, all day long. We've all done it to everybody today. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? And most of the time, they answer that wrong. You know, hey, what have you been up to? Good. <laughs> they don't even pay attention like they're not even listening. So when, you, like, when I'm taking them to the hotel, I said, hey, how are you doing? And the girl's like, oh, great. Stop, 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 stop. I said, hey. And I stop. She kind of like, makes eye contact with me. I go, how are you really doing? You doing all right? You having a good day? Did you just get on? Are you just getting off? Like, what's your, you know, you do, long lines tonight? And you just engage them in the conversation where they are right now. You make it about them. It's not about you. So it's kind of like to, you know, you want to give, you got to earn. So let's earn some time with people. And so this, this seven R's is really just a simple thing to remember where you have some rapport, you have a relationship, you have a recommendation. Hey, that's so cool. Hey, man, a lot of, you, you sound like you want to do the same, a lot of things I want to do. You got to check this out. And I don't know, I just know I sleep better, I feel great, my waist is smaller, these jeans fit me now. I'm like, I got to check it out. We get contact info and I'll send you some stuff on that. Does that sound fair? Great. Made a recommendation. Retail, recruit, retain. They have retain on twice. So there's, it goes retail next, then recruit, then retain, then you repeat. Okay? So you guys got in the back, I know you guys can't read that. What? So number one is rapport. Rapport, <laughs> then relationship, recommendation, retail, recruit, retain, and then repeat. So here's the deal. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That's a nugget you want to write down right there. Yeah. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Why do you do it? Why'd you do T25? Why did we do P90X in 2008? Why did we work so hard? All those things, because we got something out of that. And I love that when Tony explains things like the hip camp is part of the brain and endorphins and serotonin and norepinephrine and all that stuff, 
those are great facts, and they're things I might tell later and teach them in a challenge group. But right now, I don't. I'm just like, you know, we get that same common greeting of, hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? It's like, oh, man, I've been doing T25. I've never slept so good in years. My pants fit me great. But hey, how are you doing? I drop a little hint about what I've been doing. It's interesting. It's a unique answer to the common question we get asked 110 times a day. The, group, the clerk at the grocery store, they just, they're not even making eye contact. They're just, hey, how you doing? Doing great, how you doing? Everything great? Want to make a donation day to fit the life? Whatever. And, and, and they don't, it's, it's connect. You get them to make eye contact and, and connect so you know they hear you. So, what the whole deal is with this bullseye, if anybody's ever read the book uh, Start With Why with, from Simon Sinek, he's got one of the most viewed TED Talks of all time. It's 18 minutes, it would change your life. I wouldn't possibly do it justice, but I'm going to give you a, a little summary of what this is. I would strongly recommend that you Google Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, TED, you know, it's a TED Talk. It's 18 minutes of amazingness. Mm -hmm. And he so clearly articulates how you need to lead with why. So again, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Most people lead with the what. The what ring are the products. The Shakeology, you know, yes, through a fire, etc. The how, sometimes you get a little crafty, you go, oh, hey, you're a computer genius, that's cool. Uh, you'd be great with social media. Oh, man, I should tell you about Wayne White. He builds his business, he's got six kids, and orthodontist, he fixes his teeth, and he can type. <laughs> right? That's just not connecting at all. You get to the why. So I share a tiny little bit about why I do it. And I'm going to dig about why they do it. Why, why, what, what's their why, rather? Sorry. What's their why? So I need to do some discovery. I need to ask good questions. We have to just be great at asking questions. When I was younger and I worked in a retail sports shop that one of my brothers owns, I learned how to build houses working at a sports shop. I never worked in a construction crew. I never did drywall. I didn't have a father who built homes. I just had so many good conversations with customers who came in the store that one day I realized, wow, there's only about 40 things, 40 trades that go into building a home. And then I learned the order about how they went. I learned what made them tick. I learned what made them have hard days. And I just, these guys kept coming in and some girls, and, and it's just repeat of having good conversation with them, finding out about them. And in that process, that connective tissue, I'm establishing a relationship with this person so that when I went to go build my first house as an owner builder, I built this beautiful home that was architecturally incredible. And that was my first foray into home. It wasn't a little 1500 foot dinger that looked like everything else on the street. I didn't copy something. I went to an architect and worked in the plans. I learned this working at a sports shop. Okay, so it's with this practice of discovering why people do what they do. Why is that guy a great plumber? Why is this guy a great architect? Or why are you a great teacher? Whatever that is, and we find out what turns you on, and then we find out maybe what you don't like about it. You might love your job, but you hate your commute. You might love your job, but it just doesn't pay very well. You might love what you do, but your boss is an alcoholic tyrant. You might hate what you do, but the people you work with are great. There's so many versions of that story, and it's up to us to be on this path of discovery to connect with another human being, because every one of you are incredibly special. Everybody's got an amazing story. Everybody's got a background, you've got a childhood, you've got history behind you. And I think about, you know, when we talk about time and the 24 hours in a day thing, I think about famous people in history, and my team's heard this from me a lot of times, but a lot of you guys haven't heard this, but it, it's profound to think about what, say, Einstein or Shakespeare or Mozart or John F. Kennedy or Martin Luther King or any of these prolific people in our history did with their 24 hours in a day. You might not remember what they did, but you remember why they did it. I don't remember everything. I remember one thing Martin Luther King said, obviously, we all do. We had a dream. Kind of cool that the whole theme of this weekend is dream big. We remember why he did it. Okay, Shakespeare was responsible for 10% of the common sayings in the English language. That's the passion behind what he wrote. The heart, the feel, it pulls at your heartstrings. Okay? Everybody's got these amazing stories. It's finding a way to connect with another person. And when you get somebody that's either abrasive or they just don't get it or they're being a jerk, whatever, let them go. It's no big deal. There's 500 million people in North America. So can, can I give a specific example? Yes. Like using this? Because I think this is really good. How many of you run, into, you run into the opportunity where somebody asks you about a product that we have? They ask you about Shagology or they ask you about P90X or they ask you about the challenge group. And, and sometimes you just kind of screw it up from there or it doesn't turn into a conversion and that person actually being in the group. How many of you struggle with that? 
when those optical, ah, man, okay. So here's really what this is showing us, specifically with what we do, is this. When, when that opportunity arises, let's say somebody comes up and says, hey, what's this T25? I can either say what it is, right? I can talk about how it's a workout, or I can say why I love it, and then flip it back on them. Does that make sense? So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, what's this T25 stuff? Then how to handle it by leading with why would be, oh man, let me tell you, I was struggling trying to get enough exercise in because I just didn't have an hour a day. And this thing has totally changed the game for me because, uh, and, and not only that, it's helped me lose 25 pounds in almost nine weeks, which is pretty incredible. And it just really uh, has helped me a lot. Uh, why do you ask? <laughs> I lead with my why, right? I don't talk about, the, I talk about what it has done for me why I love it, why it worked, right? And then I say, why do you ask? Because they asked for a reason. And then and when we do the five steps, it'll go right into that. So, so anyway, I just thought that was like a, a specific example of how to use that target when someone asks you. How many of you in that situation, maybe they ask about T25 and you just vomit about the freaking workout? And Sean T, and you know, all the burpees that you do. And how freaking hard it is, right? Not a lot of people out there want something that's gonna totally kick their ass for the entire time. <laughs> so stop talking about that. You're scaring the hell away. And it's okay because we've all screwed this up. And when, when we had the T25 right? test disc as elite coaches, yeah, I was in the test group like you were. But when we got the test disc, I screwed up and told somebody about one of burpees. Oh yeah, uh, no, 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 you're done. I can't do one more burpee. Don't tell them what's in it. One arm burpee is really good. I'm gonna kill you. Don't be so fun. <laughs> a one arm burpee is what is in it. You see that? Yeah. You guys, and that's what we screwed up. So anyway, let's let's get going because we got some. All right. So so, so obviously if we're talking about relating to people, and, and in with that is that you have to be great at sharing stories. Okay. So facts tell and stories sell. And you want to write that down because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna find yourself fact vomiting. And when you remember this stupid little simple statement, you'll stop yourself yeah. from vomiting facts and go to stories. Does that make sense? So you have to be a collector of stories. It's literally your mission in life as a Beachbody coach to get as many stories under your belt as possible. Now, say you're a brand new coach today, okay? Is there anybody, is there anybody who's new like within the last week or two? Any recently? Okay, there's a person over here. Okay, she has no stories, she's brand new. Yeah, give her an applause. So she doesn't have the stories yet that we all have. She hasn't seen what we've seen. We're talking about doing wall spots with Tony Horton in 2009. We have years of history that went into this and trips and all this stuff. <clears throat> so on tvbeachbody.com, there are all the stories from the uh, you know, transformation winners. You, that's your first place when you're newer to go garner your stories. The Team Beach Body 411 on Facebook, great place to collect stories. I love to go download those pictures, copy and paste the text, and I keep a document of all these stories. Okay, so now I have a larger team. And so within my team, I did is I made the site that's called VictoryStories.com, and it's just a collection of, uh, uh, I mean, it's new, so it's not really finished, you know, with big depth, but there's, I don't know, 20, 30 great stories of people on our team that got great results, and it shares their story. Okay, so if I get an obese guy, I don't share a skinny guy muscle build story. If I get the skinny guy, I don't share weight loss stories. If I find a single mom, I want to line her up with another single mom. I want to tell stories to connect with the person. Because again, none of this is about me. So even if you're walking around and you're ripped buff and you're awesome and you look like you came off the track and field and you're a Olympian and you're like, ah, don't make it about you. Okay? Accept the compliment when people pay you a compliment. This is a very key thing that anybody on my team knows about. If, and Monica Ward is the one who I owe great thanks to. If anybody's on the Ward's team, uh, I didn't accept the compliment one day from Monica about a year and a half ago. And she said, You robbed me, Mike. <laughs> talking about? She goes, you just took away from me the one thing that I wanted for me. She goes, I saw something in you that inspired me. I saw something in you that I aspired to be like. And you didn't accept it with a thank you. And I'm going, wow, that's profound stuff. And when you guys are going out talking to people about things, and you're wearing your new T25 shirt, and you're looking all good, and some other mom at parent pickup goes to you and says, oh my god, you look so cute. What have you been doing? Oh god, what are you doing? God, you look great. 
Oh no, I got a lot of work to do. Fail. <laughs> you don't say that. If somebody pays you a compliment and, they're, and then she goes, Oh my gosh, you look so great. What are you been up to? Oh God, you look fantastic. I heard you just ran a marathon. You know, thank you so much. I've been having so much fun. It's been great. I've never felt, I just, it's so much fun. What are you been up to? And you flip it right back on them, but you first accept the compliment. And so, in the midst of the uh, stories, and I actually, we kind of need to this up. Okay, okay so. Yeah, I'm just basically shutting my mouth right So, <laughs> in the midst of all that, I mean, we can make this an all day seminar with this topic because it's a big, broad topic. But in the midst of all this stuff, you need to narrow the paths for people. If anybody's read the book uh, uh, Switch by the Heath brothers, they talk about how a person's like a picture an elephant with a rider. The elephant is your emotion, the rider is your rational side, and they're going down the path, right? The elephant wants to take the path it knows, it's a creature of habit, great, keeps going. You need to help narrow the path and realize the power of emotion, because we buy on emotion, but we justify with facts. But you can't be one or the other, you've got to do a little bit of both. So realize the power of the emotion, which is why the stories are just, they capture you. They pull your heartstrings. Have you ever cried on a stupid commercial on TV? Like, Why the hell am I crying? It's an at t commercial. It's like, it's <laughs> They're masters of telling stories. Okay, so then, think about this for a second. When I talk about narrowing the path, when you tell them, go to my site and pick a challenge back, I don't care how great a conversation you have, they're probably not going to buy anything. Because you gave them too many choices, and they go through this analysis paralysis in their head, and it's kind of like the, the, an example they use in that book, about a, uh, doctors who, you know, if you need to get your knee replaced, your hip replaced, if they have three pain medicines versus two as a choice, if they had more choices, they would opt for surgery. And you would think, wow, why wouldn't they just, you have more choices, I could have tried more pain meds to see if it worked for you. But yet when given more choices, they tend to just not, they go the natural path. So you have to steer that elephant, steer that powerful animal inside of you and of that person by Getting down to, when you find enough uh, out about the person in the situation, you make a great recommendation. I wouldn't give them more than two. I would, if you want to give them three, you're going to probably pick something.